In this video, we'll be finishing up on the rest of the details and learn how to set this up inside Blender. At this point, we've already covered the basic techniques to finish the Xbox, so we'll go over the steps a bit faster here. I did want to mention that since the last video, I added another button over here at the bottom right. Adding it was just like how we did the first button. Connect the square shape node to a transform 2D, shape it into the size of a USB port, invert using levels, then blur to soften the edges. Blend that with our height map, and set the multiply to make a hole. Copy the hole shape and make it smaller, then do it again and make it even smaller so we can blend them both and subtract to make a hole. Then blur and blend with add linear dodge. For the inner part of the USB port, duplicate the transform 2D node again and just scale the shape until it looks right. Duplicate the transform 2D nodes again, scale it down a bit, but this time rotate the second one by 90 degrees so we can blend and subtract to create the shape. Blur and run it through levels so we can control its height and then blend. And then blend with our hole so we can finish the USB port. For the waves icon, we can add a transform 2D from our circle shape, run it through an edge detect node, scale down the shape a bit, use a blend node so we can crop out the top part, position it lower using a transform 2D, run it through a tile sampler so we can lay it out like this, stretch it down using a transform 2D, blur, then run it through a histogram scan so it rounds out the edges. Then use the Transform 2D node again to scale and position it to where we want. Invert using levels, then blend using multiply to add it to our height map. Feel free to use the techniques you've learned to do the ports at the back. With the Xbox done, we can export textures by right-clicking on our package and export outputs as bitmaps. For rendering inside Blender, all we really need to export are these maps. Back inside Blender's node editor, we'll be importing our maps from Designer. Add an image texture, select our normal map, set the color space to non-color, connect that into a normal map node, and then plug that into our normal input. Set the metallic value to 1. Set the base color to a really dark gray, and play around with the roughness value. Import our emissive map and plug that into our emission input. Finally, import our height map. Set the color space to non-color. Connect that to the height input of the displacement node. And then connect that to the displacement input of the material output. Now let's set the render engine to cycles. Switch to the experimental feature set. And because I have an NVIDIA RTX GPU, I'll turn on optics denoising. Add in a subsurf modifier, set it to simple, and click on adaptive subdivision. Now we can tessellate our mesh by increasing the subdivision levels. In order to see the displacement, we have to switch to rendered view. Then switch from bump only to displacement and bump. It's going to look weird at first. All we need to do is lower down the scale and the displacement node and that should fix it. In order to see this better, we can import an HDR into our scene and there we go. What I did here was set up some lights, cameras, and a quick little animation. As you can probably imagine, Rendering a heavily tessellated mesh in an animation can take a while, so I'll be rendering this on a render form. Just gonna beam it up, render my animation, and just like that, we have our rendered frames. If you're interested in checking it out, 
head on over to garagefarm.net. It's super easy to use and can save you a lot of time. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot from this video series and that you can apply these techniques inside Designer into your own projects. Until next time, see you around.